Hello, Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and North Node. I'm here to give you a read straight from the hip with lots of lip. And we're going to be looking into how those energies that are still weaving their way through our lives from the uh, recent Capricorn full moon will be playing out in your life as you enter into your season here, Leo. So uh, happy solar return to all the Leos out there. I will have, you know, you all front and center with the new moon readings that'll be coming up here right quick on your new moon on July 28th. Uh, right now, though, we're specifically looking at how those energies that came in with the full moon in Capricorn uh, that we recently had will be playing out in your life leading up to that new moon, which is later this week. So, you know, we're heading into that last week of really strongly feeling that influence, and we're just going to get a clear view of what's coming in. So if you find yourself kind of at a stuck pattern, if things feel like they're held up a little bit, you can have some discernment about what still needs to be brought to a close, what, where you need to, you know, nip things in the bud, cut things off that no longer serve you, okay? Because that's what full moon energy is all about. It's simultaneously about bringing things to a culmination point, but also it's about letting go. It's about releasing so we can start to, uh, you know, seed our intentions in a new way once we head into that new moon energy. And this is really important for you right now. I mean, it is your solar return. So um, important to really call that light forward, start to uh, shed light on the new path ahead instead of nurturing things that are dead and gone. It was 1.55 on the clock when I said that. So it's definitely time for change. I feel like some of these changes uh, may have been coming about kind of abruptly for you, Leo. I feel like there's been a lot of twists and turns. Things have been kind of ex unexpected. In some cases, there's been some disruptions on your path. Hasn't been, you know, a totally smooth ride. Sometimes it's been downright chaotic. Um, but you know, you're, you're doing your best to make it through. You're doing your best to do the work. Um, and along the way, you know, it's interesting. I got kind of an interesting download that came in for you right off the bat. Some of you may have been kind of turning to comfort eating. I don't know why I got this in, but I feel like some of you are concerned about your diet right now. You know, you feel like you've sort of lost your focus. I think you've had a lot going on though, you know? Um, I think this probably has to do around a love relationship, okay? All of your cards came out here on the board, and I'm just going to kind of like bring it down for a minute so you can see. They all came out like crossing influences, okay? So you got a lot of things on your mind right now. I see that you have been sort of held up from taking a step forward, uh, due to some kind of fear, anxiety that you're processing around the past. This is very specific to you, Leo, with this uh, Nine of Swords here. Notice how there's a lion that's kind of uh, haunting this woman. So I feel like this is really like, I think this is around things that you've done in the past, actions you've taken in the past, choices you've made, maybe sort of second guessing yourself, maybe having a lot of anxiety about this maybe coming to a place of recognizing that every action I take has a reaction and maybe you're not ready to deal with some of the repercussions of those choices. This is just kind of coming in front and center. I think you've had a lot of time to kind of sit in this, muddle through this. I think you've been processing this. I think you've been getting a new view. You're definitely going through some kind of spiritual growth process at this time, okay? And I think you've really had to learn how to temper uh, your impulsiveness, with this Knight of Swords also coming as a crossing influence. That's also air sign energy. So uh, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius energy there on the board might factor into your situation. Or you may have one of these signs strongly aspected in your chart. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, North Node. And so I really feel like uh, this could strongly apply to those who have air placements in their chart. Uh, because I really feel like this is a personal message. I feel this is 
more around your actions that you've taken, uh, your choices that you've made, questioning that, uh, sort of wanting to wanting to go back and do everything differently with that hangman upside down, but things are definitely at a pause. And I do believe this has to do with a love relationship, okay, with this Ten of Cups here. So Ten of Cups is about arriving at that place of deep emotional fulfillment with a partner, right? You're you're in that place of really rooting your love together, feeling very fulfilled by it. But we see that, you know, this is still a crossing influence here. You might be really tempted to move forward very impetuously um, in a romantic connection. And this might have been something that actually was tripping you up. And there was a need to kind of put a halt on things. I think this situation right here is on pause. That's what's coming through. Yeah, there's some kind of spiritual work that needs to be done around this. I think it was put on pause because there was something that was happening within the community connected with this uh, that was really becoming problematic. This may have something to do with the King of Cups energy. Um, King of Cups would be water sign. Okay, so um, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio there. Okay. Again, any significant emplacement. Again, this might really strongly be Scorpio, though, okay? Because we do have the death card here. I do see something came to an end. And that's because it was out of alignment with your spirit. It was out of alignment with your path. Sometimes, uh, you know, the heart wants what the heart wants. But, you know, I, I'm kind of bringing to mind that song by the Rolling Stones. You can't always get what you want, but you get what you need, you know? And sometimes what we think we want actually is a big lesson, you know? <laughs> In fact, we usually want most what is a lesson for us. And I know it's the rub, ma'am, but it is the way that it is. And I have to say that I think that because of some choices you've made in this regard, there, there's there been a little bit of some touchy stuff uh, that's gone down in the community, you know? I think there's been disruption in a community and and it may also be difficult for you to sort of find your place back within a community, 7-Eleven on the clock when I said that, or even to find your community, maybe because of what's happened uh, with this particular uh, romantic connection, you're sort of feeling a bit like outside of your community now and you're wondering like, where where is my community? Where are my people? Who do I align with? You know, um, I, I have this feeling of just like sort of being the odd man out. I think this is a time of, a lot of personal growth for you you know we do see this empress energy on offer okay that is taurus and libra energy there too okay with that empress card this is a big libra card here with the three of swords okay so very much might have some libra factoring into your situation in some way shape or form um yeah this might have to do with your community Ooh, such confirmation here look at this we got queen of swords Coming in with the Five of Pentacles, I think you felt cut off by this person. I think that, um, you know, this person may have been somebody very central in your community. Uh, and because of that, you know, you're feeling a bit isolated. I also feel like this is like, as well, like, for some of you, this is a message of, you know, you know who you are inside. You know, you know who you are inside and what you bring to the table, what kind of love you deserve. And it's sort of like... You realize the ways that you've abandoned yourself with this three of swords sort of buying into just that instant gratification. I'm really getting with that knight of swords energy and realizing how that just kind of leaves you like the odd man out every time. Like you're the one left standing alone, you know, you, you're the one who, who feels like you get passed by. I think there's like a bit of looking back on the past with this, you know, and, and feeling regrets about this. Either way, there's definitely a need for boundaries in this situation. I see this very strongly, okay? On on some level, either you're not respecting boundaries or your boundaries aren't being respected. Uh, pick what side you're on, okay? Because this energy can be totally transferable. But in some way here, you know, there's a lot of energy trying to come at you. And in particular, wand energy, okay? So... 
there's a lot of sexual energy I feel that's been coming at you and maybe that it's been that way for a while like you've always wanted to have more more depth you know something that was more rooted in in true affinity you know but I feel like you've just kind of settled uh, for some of this superficial like ego gratification in the past and I think now you're getting a clue about this you got the memo and you're you're you know standing up for yourself and sort of trying to preserve your space. I also feel like um, you've needed to really go inside and connect with this energy big time. You know, um, you're in a process of transformation. I feel like it's a process of spiritual transformation, and it really involves a lot of self reflection, kind of looking at your own role as opposed to blaming things on other people and I saw this like bird fly be by the window when I said that and it just gave me this sense of like this is how you get your freedom you know and kind of untangle all those knots in your consciousness that are just like these stuck places in the record that like keep you going over and over and over again keep you in this place of indecision and in doing that you know you can align with the love that is truly meant for you. 1044 on the clock when I said that. I do believe there's some message that will be coming in in regard to this. And it could lead to travel. We have had air sign factor strongly in your chart. On um, your chart. <laughs> you might have air strongly placed in your chart, okay? Maybe Gemini, okay? Because this is a Gemini um, significator with this, uh, with this card here. The lover's. Um, but I do feel, uh, I do feel it's, it's for those who have air placements strongly aspected in their natal charts. This message is really coming through because I'm seeing a lot of air cards on the board or you're dealing with an air sign, but I am getting this specific message that those of you Leos that have strong air placements in your chart, you're going to get some kind of message coming in, some kind of invitation. I believe it's for a romantic getaway, you know, and this is somebody that maybe you've been trying to make up your mind about. I feel like maybe you've been in two minds about this. Um, the messages that's kind of coming through is beware of the intention, you know. Is this just about like somebody wanting to, you know, get it in with you? Or are they really uh, valuing you for who you are? I don't know. We do see you kind of turning down this offer. There's something about it that makes you feel like you want to protect yourself. You're not so sure if you want to go down this road. There's been some kind of dissatisfaction in the past. And we do see this is really like page energy coming forward. And what does this page bring? A wand. You know? <laughs> Somebody wants to give you the wand, Leo. I mean, that's what I'm saying here. This also could be you. This also could be the part of you. Again, you know, it is your suit. With the wand energy here, that's uh, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, okay? So it also could be you that maybe that's been too much of your focus is like just the, the sexual gratification. Maybe this is what you've done in the past. You've been more focused on sexual gratification, kind of like um, satisfying the ego, um, getting getting it in in the moment rather than thinking long term about what's really going to fulfill you, what's really going to satisfy you. I think there's been some disappointment around this actually. Like you felt some disappointment within yourself about it. But I feel like this is the energy that you've really been transforming with this uh, you know, Capricorn full moon energy that came in 1313 13 on the clock when I said that. It's all about you kind of like being very honest about the hand that fate dealt you. And now it's up to you. Are you going to just take this hand of fate, you know, or are you going to take that energy and are you going to alchemize it? Are you going to transform it? And are you going to spin it into destiny? Because that's really what it's all about. 1333 on the clock when I said that. I see you really investing in yourself with this nine of pentacles energy. And it's by investing in yourself and doing this work that you come to a place of true fulfillment within yourself. And the Nine of Pentacles is pre-Empress energy. We've already had the Empress on the board. So I feel like you're really in a process of like getting your Empress back. You're in a process of getting your power back. And I think you've been through a long um, kind of dark night of the soul period where you realize how much you have given to, you know, romantic relationships, how much you have poured your energy out how it's affected your balance, you know, and I think you've been doing a lot of healing. I think there is a lot more healing that needs to be done around this. I feel like there's this need to move out of the more kind of like logical, um, 
fiery, impetuous kind of energy more into this place of letting yourself soften and cry. You know, frog medicine is all about spiritual cleansing that comes through water, comes through tears, also spiritual baths to just cleanse away the old cycle. You're about to step into your new cycle, right? You're about to step into the sun, like the dark passage is over, okay? It's time to step into the light. It's your time to shine. It's your solar return you're moving into here. And it's time for you to stop pouring out all your energy on these things that have rocked your stability, rocked your sense of balance. And in this piece, I am getting a kind of dualistic message. Yes, I believe that, that you do have some kind of love connection that felt like a soulmate um, in the mainframe here. But I also feel this is about your financial stability and, and your career and how you move forward with that. And... Um, maybe you've been, you know, pouring your energy out in a way that hasn't really best served you. There's like this need to come more in, into alignment, to open yourself up to inspiration again and to what really fuels your fire, you know, um, what really makes you want to just get up in the day and, and, you know, pour your energy into something just for the sheer joy of it, because it fulfills you that much. And I think there's, there's something coming forward about this, about, you needing to have your time to shine. I think maybe you've been working uh, just with that message about the community that came in earlier and in, in terms of how you've been affected with a romantic connection. I think this also applies to your work. Like, I feel like you poured out a lot of energy um, within community um, in regard to how you like make your money. And now I feel like it's more about stepping into that pre-Empress, you know, nine of pentacles energy where you're really pouring into yourself, investing in yourself. Either way, you know, we see that we got a lot of love and fulfillment coming in and this is what wants to be uh, delivered to you, but you have to be open to receive it. So I think this is a time of kind of turning the focus away from other people and um, what they're doing or what they've done to you or how you feel they've wronged you or any of this kind of thing. And instead, it's just really about owning your own energy um, owning your own choices and doing your own healing work and, and trusting that those that you are meant to align with will align with you. And I do feel like love is coming in for you. And I think you're going to start to get um, the hints of that in your season, in Leo season, okay? We do have the judgment right behind here, affirming that, All right? So that looks really good. Let's look at the top of the deck energy here. Yeah, we see you moving into victory, okay? So not much longer, Leo. Just give it give it an opportunity to develop. But I feel like there is a certain level of this kind of like struggling with this impetuous energy involved in your spread where there's, there's like sort of this taming the beast kind of energy. We don't have your other card strength on the board here. But I'm feeling that energy of the strength card. Like it's time to sort of do a little bit of straightening by fire and, and maybe sit in the place that's uncomfortable a little bit and see what it has to show you. Not resisting the discomfort so much and feeling like you have to fix it right away and get things moving right away. And that actually this is what's kind of trapped you in no win situations in the past is this impulsivity, you know, just kind of doing things on the spur of the moment. And I think that spontaneity is a wonderful thing. There's a lot that can be learned through spontaneity, but at the same time, there's this piece of, it's important that you're very mindful about how you move forward from this point forward. And it's all from a position of really valuing yourself, not putting yourself in compromising positions again. It's really time to like, cut off what doesn't serve you. And again, here is the air sign energy again. So you might be dealing with an air sign. This is, uh, you know, um, Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius, okay? Coming forward really strong here. I think that, you know, where there's been a problem in the past is that uh, you just feel like you've been waiting so long for your ships to come in. You're like, I've invested my energy in situations, you know? I. I did follow my heart. I've been really patient. I've been waiting and I'm just waiting for my ships to come in, waiting to see the reward for all the time and energy I invested. Yeah, but see, we got the seven of swords here. All right. So what I'm seeing here clearly is that what you've done in the past is 
you've invested in some fuck shit, you know, you've invested in situations where, you know, there was not a balance of give and take. There was not honesty. Things were not above board. You know, you were not on the same page. You didn't have the same vision. And so when things came to light, you felt ripped off. But the truth is you really kind of knew you were sabotaging yourself. You knew because you knew it wasn't in alignment with your Empress energy. I really feel like there is this like there's this challenge around that, like just really being honest about shit, you know. I always feel like I'm the one left behind, but then the reality is you left yourself behind, you know, and that's that's a bitter pill to swallow. I mean, we've all been there before. We've all been in that place where we abandoned ourselves and then had to really look at that. Like, what is that in me that caused me to do that, you know, but you can transform this energy with the magician, okay? This is beautiful energy. You do have the power to transform this. I believe you will. I feel like you're in the process of alchemy, you know? And I also am really picking up strongly a renewal energy. And sometimes with this magician card, especially uh, with the other cards we have on the board here and the way things have kind of panned out, sometimes this can be like, a situation being brought back from the brink of death. Like you thought that this was just done, dusted. There's no way there can be any renewal. Sometimes this can also be people who've just plain old, they've given up on love. They're like, love's just not for me. I always end up with, you know, the person who, you know, can't keep it in their pants. You know, they're, they're, they're telling me what I want to hear. They're selling me a pretty story. But the reality is, you know, I always end up feeling betrayed or I always feel abandoned in the end. Um, and maybe you went to a place where you went kind of cold with that queen of swords, king of swords energy. Maybe you went to that place where you just got really logical with yourself and said, you know what? I just need to cut this off. I, I'm sabotaging myself by continuing to participate in this, you know. Um, but it might have been through that very action that there actually is a renewal and a new hope for love that comes into your life. And I really do believe that's the case, Leo. Okay, so let's see what kind of transformation comes in here for you. I'm going to look at the cut of the deck energy. We see a key here for this transformation. First of all, you have to stop, you know being so defensive with this nine of wands, 22, 11 on the clock. If you want to come into alignment with another, you have to, you have to cut off this posturing. This is like fighting, always taking a stand, always feeling like you have to be defending yourself, you know? And here's another thing. It's like in terms of a love relationship, if it's meant to be, it, it'll just flow. You don't need to fight. You don't need to struggle with it. So if you find yourself in this position, like, I'm not going to let go of this thing. I'm going to fight for it tooth and nail until I get my way and I get what I want. Even though you're like worn out as fuck when you're at this place of the nine of wands. I mean, this is someone who's been like battling for a long time, may have been even a highly competitive situation. And also with that three of wands, you know, I believe this is both in terms of work and romance. I feel like you've been put in situations where you always felt like you were like uh, competing, had to compete, you know, rather than just being recognized for who you are and what you bring to the table. Uh, I think it's time to stop that shit and just recognize that if it's not working, it's not working. More, more fighting for it, more forcing it isn't going to make it happen. What's meant for you will just align with you. It's by you kind of coming into this place of just really letting all that go and just being okay with investing in yourself and seeing what happens. That's what aligns you with everything you need. And that is what gets everything moving with the eight of wands. All right. You are really doing a lot of important spiritual growth work as you kick off your solar return here. All right. Um, and it's going to get things moving. All right. Just be a little patient once this energy builds, once this energy comes in, I see you moving forward very quickly. I see that transformation. You're actually going to be on the move too. I think you're going to be hitting the road. I think you're going to be doing some traveling. Uh, a lot of you are actually going to be moving. You're going to be moving house. And this very well could have something to do with a romantic relationship. You might need to relocate. 
um, you know, to uh, be able to take this relationship to the next level. You may be traveling to visit this person because they live at a distance. You may be going on, uh, I just got honeymoon, okay? Some of you may be getting, you know, hitched spontaneously. Might be a Vegas wedding in store for some of you. Oh, that's a very interesting message that came in. I just got that. I don't know who I'm talking to, okay, but these messages are for somebody, so I always like speak them and bring them in. It's not going to be everybody's story, but some of you are going to Las Vegas and you're participating in some kind of event there, and while you're there, you're just going to spontaneously get hitched. It's like something that you've always known you and this person were going to do. You're going to take it to that next level, but maybe in your mind, you had this image of like some real fancy wedding, and I think... You're just going to be caught up in the moment and you're going to go for it. You might do a party down the road uh, just to celebrate with your friends and family. But I do see things are really going to get moving. Um, and I do see a lot of messages coming in that bring you opportunities career-wise, okay? So just wait for that. And right now, continue to focus on yourself and transforming the need to just like go for the first thing that comes your way. I think you need to be more selective and really look at how you've moved in the past, where that you know, where that took you, where those choices took you and, um, be more mindful, be more mindful moving forward. Don't lose the, don't lose the lessons, even in situations where you felt like you got a raw deal. Uh, try to look at the lesson, try to learn, uh, more about what it brought forward in you that can prevent you from having negative experiences in the future, because you have all the power you need to transform your life. It's all about the choices you make. So choose to come from the light that is your natural nature and let yourself shine and have your moment in the sun and enjoy that time of victory because I do see you coming to a place of success uh, where you are recognized for what you bring to the table and it's going to feel so damn good and you deserve it. Enjoy, Leo. Happy birthday.